Hey, welcome back to ZK Master Tech. Today we're going to get started on the hydro pump repairs on this S680 combine. Um, this is the combine that I filmed hauling out of the field. Um, if you haven't seen that video yet, I'll throw up a link right here where you guys can check that out. Um, but basically, a little backstory on this machine is I was helping another technician out trying to figure out why this combine uh, wouldn't move. Um, it was throwing a bunch of transmission codes, it was throwing um, codes for the hydro, and whenever I showed up, I got up in the combine and I went to start it, and I could tell that the pump was stuck in full stroke and it almost killed this 13.5 liter engine. I mean, I've never heard a 13.5 get down on its knees that hard. I mean, it almost killed it. So I immediately knew that the pump was most likely locked up. So the next thing that I did was I pulled the cover off to the hydraulic filter in the reservoir and whenever I pulled that cover I could tell that there was brass and metal filings everywhere in that filter and in that reservoir. So I knew at that point we pretty much had total system contamination and we could no longer run this engine anymore and we were going to have to haul it in. So. Our main mission was to just get the combine back to the shop. Now we got the combine back to the shop and I had fun pulling that thing back in, in here and pushing it in and steering it with the steering hoses and everything. But I finally got it backed into my bay here. And today we're going to start the repairs. So we're gonna start draining the oil and just trying to figure out, you know, where's the metal stop? You know, I already know you know, we're gonna need a pump, we're gonna need a motor, we're gonna need the lines, we're gonna need an oil cooler, main hydraulic pump, reservoir. Um, there's a bunch of stuff that can't be flushed um, that I know has to be contaminated. Also, this combine's full wheel drive, so we have rear wheel motors that are, they have to be contaminated because they're, they're teed right into our forward and reverse pressure lines um, coming out of our pump. So we're gonna have quite a bit of components that we already know that need replaced, but we're just gonna start draining stuff to see how bad it is. And first, let's just check out and see what codes this thing was setting before, because I didn't really get a chance to do that in the field. So let's check it out. Okay, so I got the codes pulled up for the PTP controller, which is the controller responsible for the pro drive system. That's our, our pump and our motor and our transmission. So what do we got here? Transmission two range problem. Reverse hydrostatic pressure problem. Yeah, probably does. Pump commanded to out output forward flow, but output flow is not as expected. Yeah, sure, probably isn't. Hydrostatic charge pressure low. I wouldn't doubt it. Motor speed one and motor speed two do not match. Ground speed is limited to 6.2 mile an hour. Yep, that's probably true too. So some common codes that I see whenever we just have a complete pump failure. And also, the previous tech was trying to do a pump calibration on it, and that's whenever she really failed and started making a lot of noise. And I think the pump, you know, because it's got to go to full forward and reverse stroke during that calibration, and I think it, it got stuck in one direction, and, and it's just locked up in full stroke. So whenever you try to start the engine, it's trying to build full forward or full reverse pressure I'm not sure which direction it's stuck at but you know when you're trying to build that much pressure right when the engine's just first starting it ain't gonna sound pretty all right so we got the hydraulic reservoir right here now I'm just gonna show you what I seen in the field that I knew that the pump had failed so you take this cap off there's a little spring that goes in this filter and if you look on top of this filter you can just see it's full of filings, especially down in there. See all that? In my experience when you get 
brass filings like that, it's a pump failure in the, the hydrostatic pump. So you see, that's just sitting on top, you know. This thing's been sitting for a while. Just imagine what's settled down inside of this reservoir. And this reservoir has baffles inside of it. And you can't fully flush this reservoir out properly. I mean, you gotta get every little thing cleaned out of this in order for that system to work properly. So I know the reservoir is gonna have to be replaced. Try to, there we go, I can just barely grip it. Oh yeah. Let's see if you can see a chunk right there. Okay, so I got this filter out on the bench and you can just see all the brass material stuck in this thing and that's the stuff that just gets in everywhere this is no bueno sir okay here we got our hydro motor so this is the hydraulic motor that it's getting power from the hydrostatic pump and these two hoses you either got forward or reverse pressure which then turns this motor which is splined into this two-speed automatic transmission and makes the transmission turn which makes these axle shafts turn that are going out to the final drive here oh it's dark sorry about that but anywho i took the the lines off the back of the motor here we're draining the oil down i also took the case drain line off we're just draining it all down um already peeked inside these lines and they've got some a metal flake and brass inside of them so this is the lowest point on this system so i just wanted to go ahead and drain this first and see what was inside the lines but you know it's getting the motor and all the lines regardless but i just wanted to get this draining for now a real fine metal flake in that line okay now I'm gonna drain this hydraulic reservoir under here we got a valve and I just attach a 5 8 hose and I just route it down to where it's gonna go into a drain barrel and then we got a quarter inch Allen here and we're gonna loosen it and bring that valve down to open this up and drain it. All right, after I got the reservoir drained, I went ahead and took this main suction line for the Powercast tailboard pump. That's what's running your spreaders on the back here. So, but it, it goes directly into the bottom of the reservoir. Um, so once I took this off, it, it drained another 10 gallon or so down there because it's on the other side of the baffle in that reservoir but so far looking into these lines i don't see any brass so that's a good sign because it'd really suck if it got you know contaminated went into this valve stack and then into the motors on there but you know so far this looks pretty clean i didn't see or i didn't see anything in this line here so that's good so what we're working on is just basically trying to get everything unhooked from the bottom of this reservoir to try to get it drained and the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to this hose right here and take this off because this is right where the priority valve is and there's a screen right there. So I want to get this hose off right here and check and see what we got in this screen in this valve. Okay, I went ahead and jacked the combine up, put it on jack stand and I took this tire off and it was full of bee juice. So that was fun. That thing was super duper heavy. Put it on a tire dolly that you guys seen me use before and strapped her down and wheeled that out of the way now we got room for activities right here so now we're going to get in here and get this drain down and pull this valve out all right remember these nipex wrench pliers break that line loose get 
get it out of my way. Now we can just adjust it. Break this line loose. And of course the fitting wants to turn. Great. Attempt number two. Drum roll, please. Looks pretty good. Guess it's my lucky day. I don't see no metal poopies in there yet. That's a good thing. I'll take it. So I'm trying to take this line loose right here, but it's tight and the fitting wants to spin. Just to let you in on a little trick. This is every size wrench with impact. So you hold the fitting and then you just get your air hammer right here and you're just gonna tickle this flat right here and get this line to turn. Just like that. Now you can see I didn't have to put a lot of pressure on it. And it doesn't really hurt this line. I mean, it puts a little tiny dimple in it, but it, it's still gonna work. You can still get a wrench on it. <laughs> If you're too worried about it, you can just kind of take a flap wheel and smooth that off. But that saves you from having to get another person or get a wrench extender, whatever. You know, you just easily air hammer that line off like it's nothing. It doesn't really damage it or hurt it. So I misspoke earlier. There's not technically a screen in here. I was mainly referring to this, this priority valve here. So if there was going to be anything metal-wise in there, it most likely would get stuck right here and we'd probably see it right here, but everything looks clean, so that's a good sign. Because this is our main hydraulic valve stack here and really don't want that all contaminated. I'm just going to kind of loosely connect this stuff up back for now. All right. So here we have a return manifold. We're gonna take the line off the bottom here and drain that down. That went very tight. Oh, that made a mess. All right. So here we got our lines going to our four wheel drive control valve right here and they're super tight and I ain't got a whole lot of room in here but we're replacing these lines anyway so we're going to take the, the every size wrench here and break them loose matter for marring these up because we're going to replace it anyway. That's number two. You guys might want to invest in some floor dry in the stock market because I'm just using it. 
check this out. Uh oh. That's not good. Man, a lot came out. That's not good. So it's coming out of these, this valve right here, these hoses kind of curve around, come back through here. And here are our wheel motors on the back here. This is what our four wheel drive system uses. We got motors turning the, the rear wheels. And then these lines come up, up here, and they tee in to the main lines for the hydro. And then, you know, these lines are going all the way down and they go to the motor that we took off up front, but they go all the way up here to the pump. So whatever's discharging straight out of the pump is gonna come down into this T, this green T right here. And then they come straight down and go to this valve. Well, that's a low point on the system there. And you can just see that is full of metal poopies. And look, you can't even wipe this stuff off your glove. It doesn't even come off hardly. You know, what do you think that's doing to the inside of those hydraulic lines and all those valves and everything that that gets into? It's just, I mean, it doesn't even wipe off. It's just impregnates into everything. So that's why a lot of times stuff is non-flushable. You just have to replace it because once you get that in there, you just can't get it out by flushing. All right, now we're going to start working on taking this reservoir out of here. You can see, look at the bottom of this reservoir. It's just full of metal. So all these hoses, wiring, all the stuff on the bottom, these, these two rails, that's all going to have to come off. Now we're going to take my handy dandy chain horse here. We got everything undone off the reservoir.
Okay, now that the reservoir is removed, I'm gonna go ahead and remove these two rails here, get them out of my way, because the next step is pulling this whole pump assembly out. So here's our hydrostatic pump right here. So we gotta get all the lines off of this pump. This right here is a transfer gear case, so it just transfers power down for the main hydraulic pump here. Um, but we're gonna take all the hoses off and we're gonna pull this whole assembly as one unit up and out of this hole. I'm not sure if I'm gonna have to take this exhaust pipe off here. I don't know if I'm gonna have the clearance or not yet. I don't know, I have to figure that out, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get all these lines taken off. Okay, now I'm down on the bottom side again. First thing I'm gonna do is take this air pipe off right here because it's just right in my teeth. And then I'm gonna start taking the lines off of the main hydraulic pump and the side of the, the hydro pump right here and try to get this all stripped away so then I can go up top, get the rest of them out, and I'll be ready to strap it and take the bolts out and lift it out. But I think I changed my mind. I think I am gonna pull this hydraulic pump off separately because um, it's just a couple lines and a couple bolts I can run a strap around it and just sneak that guy out of there then that'll give me this much extra clearance to take this whole assembly backwards and up through that hole then I'm I know I'll be able to clear that exhaust pipe that's the plan at least okay now that we got that pipe out of my teeth now I can get in and take this output line off there's a little load sense line there and then another line on the back and then I can get this pump removed. Okay, so we got the everything hooked, unhooked from the main hydraulic pump here. We got a strap cinched onto the pump up here to my little handy dandy chain hoist off the boom here. That'll just take enough weight off of here to where we can get her disconnected. off hoister up out of there okay now that we got the hydraulic pump out of the way now we can start stripping all these hoses and lines off the pump and get this electrical off here and then we got four big bolts that we got to break loose that are probably super duper tight and we'll get those broke loose and then we'll just you know cinch it strap it just like we had the main hydraulic pump and then place this bad boy out of here but maybe it's time for some music and a time lapse sure Okay, so we got the same process again. It's just a little bit bigger this time. I think she's gonna need a little persuasion. All right, a little pry bar action here. Can't really get in there. Oh.
just like that. Now go up. This is the transfer gear case here. That's where the main hydraulic pump went in. And you can see here there's even metal inside of this cavity. coming out of that I think I've seen something in this where this fitting is that you guys are gonna like uh-oh that's not good you know that's that brass colored metal we were seeing properly labeled look inside that hole just massive carnage in there all right so I'm not gonna take this thing apart because I gotta leave it together for the core and I'm afraid if I take it apart I won't be able to get it back together and I just don't have the time to mess with this thing. So we're just gonna leave this one together and just we'll have to transfer all these fittings and sensors and stuff over to the new one whenever I get it in. I still don't have it in yet. Okay, now I'm gonna work on pulling this motor out here. So we've got a couple electrical connections we gotta undo and then we just got four mounting bolts to take off. Um, I'm gonna take this fitting out here because then I'm gonna have to put blocks on it right here because I'm gonna use a, a transmission jack so I can come up here and it'll hit here but I need some blocks to kind of make up this space right here and then we'll strap it down okay we got the jack in place got these blocks in here to make up that gap strap it real tight and then we'll just pull this thing out and lower it down and pull it out okay I pulled it out now we're just gonna ease it down oh, hold on a second it's catching on these lines yeah now I'll go down again keep going All right, 
right, so I just went ahead and swapped those motors out on the, the jack and threw this one up in there and splined it in. And we're gonna torque these bolts down and hook up these electrical connectors. And then I'm just gonna leave the caps and plugs on it for now until we get the lines replaced that we needed. But I thought since we already had this motor in, I'd just go ahead and throw it up in there. Okay, now that we got that motor hung up there, we're gonna work on yanking these drive hoses out. So we're putting a mud hog kit on this um, because it was the only parts we could get available and it was cheaper. So, but in order to make the mud hog kit work, um, it's meant to convert a two wheel drive combine to four wheel drive. So I had to order two wheel drive hoses because the mud hog kit, actually you put two blocks in down here and then you run two hoses to these separate blocks you know, to get your forward and reverse pressure. And then you run new hoses back down to there. So we no longer can use these uh, four wheel drive hoses because we have these T's here. And with that mud hog kit, we don't need that. So um, we're gonna pull these hoses out and get rid of those T's to get ready for two wheel drive hoses. So a two wheel drive hose, there's no T, there's no brakes. It's all one piece so the four wheel drive hoses there's actually four hoses put together so it'll be two hoses that will run the full length all the way down to here so we're just going to go ahead and get these ripped out and then we'll be able to get to the um the real uh the real pump hose here that runs all the way back and we're just going to start yanking some hoses out of here but you can see it's pretty dirty and quite a mess so we'll have to be pulling hoses and cleaning and it's going to take a bit of time. You know, I think it's a good time to listen to a podcast while we yank all these hoses off of here. Um, you guys check out the Certified Wrench podcast. It's a really good one. He's got a new episode that I haven't listened to yet, so might as well get that baby going. All right, so I unbolted this return manifold from here, get it out of my way. Got all the bolts out for there, and then we pulled these two lines out and unbolted them from the hard lines there and got them laying on the floor here so we got those out of the way now we're gonna work on getting this one pulled out of there and it's going comes down here and clamps onto a hard line for our real pump here so and it went all the way to the bottom of the reservoir but i've got it hanging down here right now it was draining so We'll get that guy yanked out next. All right, so I got all the clamps loose for this real pump hose and I had to dig out all that mess. I was just packed in here just to get one clamp off right here. Okay, the next step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these T's out of here and these top pressure lines, um, and then the ones that go down to the four wheel drive control valve here. So I'm gonna get that all yanked out, but look at all these hoses I got in over here. Isn't this pile just daunting? Uh, now that I got those pressure hoses and T's out of the way. I'm gonna come up here and take this drain plug out for the main engine gear case. I'm gonna drain the wall on that and we're gonna take a peek inside and make sure we don't have any metal or anything that's not supposed to be in there. So I'm gonna take that plug out and then I'm gonna use a forma funnel to hold up in there to hopefully shoot it down into my drain barrel here. So hopefully we don't make a big mess this loose.
missed a little bit. All right, so I got the main engine gear case drained and I also drained down the transmission. Um, the oil that came out of it was pretty dark. Um, it had like a hint of a burnt odor, but it wasn't, it wasn't terrible. So I went ahead and stuck my bore scope in here into the bottom of the main engine gear case because the screen is really difficult to pull out because you got to pull like a housing off the side that also has this stuff bolted to that housing and it's real difficult to remove so I stuck the bore scope in the hole and then I could clearly see the screen and it was clean and white. I didn't see any you know, clutch material or any metal stuck to it anywhere. I stuck my finger up in there and kind of swirled around the bottom of the pan and I didn't get any metal there either. So I think we're gonna be all right there. We'll just go ahead and we'll change the filter um, that's up by the transmission. And then we'll also, you know, put all new oil in the system. And I think, you know, the managed gear case, the five speed feeder house drive and the two speed automatic transmission, that's all one system uses all the oil. So just drain all the oil out of it. And uh, I might do a little flush on each gear case and then change the filter and then fill it up. And then I think that system will be okay. Okay, now I'm going to replace all four of these lines right here. Um, these are, were either connected to the return manifold or the case train, which I know is contaminated. So we're just gonna pull one out at a time so we make sure we get everything orientated correctly. So we'll replace all four of those. Ta-da! So I got all these four lines ran to up here. And the secret here, fellers, is to just loosely tighten, you know, just set them on the threads is what I'm saying. And then get all your clamps in position all the way. And don't tighten nothing yet. So you want to get this all into position first because we got to run more hoses down here. We might need to adjust something. So got those ran. Some of them are kind of flopping down here because I got to attach them to this return manifold here. But I need to get this all off and I need to flush this return manifold out. Still got to get this line off, this line off, this line off. Get that manifold flushed out. You know, get a new hose here. Also got to take this hard line off here. It goes up to a T. I got to get that off and flushed out before I can hook the case drain from the motor up. So I've got everything ran from here back, but now I've got to do a little bit more work right here. Okay, so we got the return manifold here and I'll show you why I'm taking this guy apart. See those pieces of metal stuck in this check valve? That's holding it open. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's also metal down inside this. Oh, I still, yeah, there you can see it. So this check valve goes to, is the return from the rear wheel motors. So you know metal's been completely through them and returning back through here because this goes on here like this and the oil flow is going this direction. So it's got that all messed up. And then you can see, there, there you go. You see all the metal stuck in that thing. So I'm gonna get this thing flushed out and get that back on so we can hook our our new lines back up but that's why i replaced those um, four lines going to the front because they were hooking into this return manifold and been contaminated so get this thing flushed out and get it back on then we can start hanging some more hoses so i got the manifold flush and i got all the new lines and a new check valve on there set in place but i was changing one line that goes from the bottom of the hydro to the top of this primary valve and i noticed there was some brass and metal coming out of this line going in the top right here so i pulled this fitting out and looked down inside and i could see a few flakes down in the bottom down in right here so i think we're just going to go ahead and take this valve block off and get it on the bench and just take everything apart and flush it out and make sure everything's clean on this guy. Because if you got a problem here, then it can send it out somewhere else and get stuck in another valve. And we could just be 
chasing problems on this thing forever. So I'm gonna do the best I can to fix this and make sure we get all the metal contamination out that I possibly can without trying to just replace everything on this machine. You know, I gotta try to keep the cost down as much as I can. So I'm gonna get this off and we'll tear it apart. Okay, so I got the stack off here. Um, the metal was down, I looked down in this hole and it goes down to here into this port and then it also comes out the side here and here. But it looks like it's mostly sitting right down in here and there's also some right here. So we'll get that cleaned out and then I'm just gonna start taking everything out individually and looking inside and seeing if there's any other metal contamination in there. And if I find more, then I'll go deeper and, and flush it out and clean it. All right, so I took every valve, sensor, plug, fitting, everything out of here and everything else was clean. So the only problem I had was down in this one cavity that went down into here and here in here so that's all cleaned out so this thing's ready to go back on the combine okay so i got the valve stack back on and all the lines hooked back up now i could continue with what i was doing before and i replaced this line right here and this little load sense line right here got them looped through and they're just gonna hang until we can get the pumps in still don't have a hydro pump in so we're just gonna continue with um going up here and getting this line this hard line off right here and getting it flush and then i'm going to start working on the two lines that run to the cooler and then there's two more lines that run from the cooler to the main engine gear case so we're going to do that next okay here's this hard line i keep talking about that goes to this t right here so this hose right here is going to the it's going back around going to the front side of the oil cooler this one comes back around here. Well, I got it tucked up here, but it went to the reservoir. So we're gonna get these nuts loose right here and these clamps, take this line off, and then I'm just gonna flush it out and get this line off, get this line off. These two are getting replaced, flush this T out. All right, that's gonna do it for this episode. Um, we got a lot done so far, but there's still a ton of work to do on this thing to get it to move again. Um, check out my little chart right here. I forgot to show you guys this. Let me let me bring you in here. All right, so here we got the S680 Hydraulic Nightmare chart. Um, this is a remove column. This is install. So I like to do this anytime I got a big project, so I kind of know what's been done and what I got left. Um, we've removed the hydro, the transfer gear case, and the main hydraulic pump. We removed the hydraulic reservoir, the hydro motor, the hydro lines. Um, we have to convert it to two-wheel drive lines because remember I said the to, in order to make this mud hog kit work, we have to install two-wheel drive lines because the way that the new lines tee in, they tee in down here instead of back there. Um, Replace the return hoses and case drain, we did that. The real pump hose this guy we did that um, the primary valve stack so we took that off and took it apart and flushed the contaminants out of that um, we still have to remove the four-wheel drive motors the hoses and the valve um, we still need to do the oil cooler and the lines but we have to remove a ton of shields to get to this basically the just about the amount of shields we have to, to remove to uh, to pull the engine out we have to remove to get this oil cooler out also got to take the engine fan and the fan shroud off and all that good stuff so this this right here is a b pretty big job just doing this oil cooler um, the power cast suction and pressure lines we already did that um, for so install um, we still got to install the hydro the transfer gear case and the main hydraulic pump but my parts are back ordered so I'm waiting on parts on that so um, the hydraulic reservoir, I do have that, but I can't put that in until I put the hydro in. Um, the hydro motor, we've already got that hooked in. Um, just got to put the lines on. The hydro lines in the four-wheel drive conversion kit, still got to do that. Um, the return hoses and the case drain, that's done. The main hydraulic output hose, the parts are back ordered for that. Um, the real pump hose, we already did that. Flush the 
the hard line that goes into the pump, I did that. Um, primary valve stack, we did that. Four-wheel drive motor kit, oil cooler and lines, power cast lines, and then we gotta fill this thing with oil. And then I will actually take the injection harness off so we can crank this thing over so we can prime and fill all the lines and the pumps and, and get it totally full with oil before we actually start the engine. Um, once we start the engine and we verify there's no leaks, then we can go in and calibrate the pro drive. So we'll have to run a series of calibrations on the, the pump and the motor. And then we'll do a test drive and check for leaks. So you can see there is still a ton of stuff left to do, but I'm waiting on some parts and I can't put some things in until I get these other parts in. So there's only so much I can do. So we're going to wrap this up for part one. And then part two will be, you know, finish removing the four wheel drive stuff and the oil cooler. And then we'll start installing all the parts once the parts come in. So that's gonna do it for this video. Stick around for part two. Make sure you guys like and subscribe so you don't miss the whenever I upload part two. And I appreciate you guys watching and keep that green iron moving. And hopefully we can turn this hydraulic nightmare back into the dream. See you guys next time.